Hey, and finally, we are at the DLC manager. Uh, so again, the managers are here. They are just little script files loaded in autoload, so they are always available. And now uh, we already saw that uh, where the DLC stuff is loaded. So here we can now look at the file and go step by step what's happening again. This here is, uh, was a little dictionary made for the CFG manager, actually. Uh, it's not used by the DLC manager, but it just fit in uh, better here. It maps the export name, uh, the export preset name to the actually folder of your uh, uh, DLC. And it's important to keep the export setting the data lists or file lists up to date. Uh, more important here is the DLC main directory. And this is called DLCs, no surprise. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just this directory here. And then we have a little thing um, here. This is the project directory. And it is used to, um, to find all the, the DLC files here. Like uh, when you start the game, the game starts and then it will look into this folder as a subfolder and then find all the files in there, like all the, the DLCs you have. And I noticed it does not work when I just say, um, look at, for example, uh, like something like this. <laughs> yeah, uh, this does not work because the res um, directory points to the root of your project, which would be in that case, uh, here where the exe file is basically this is kind of the root but the folder um, or it's it's basically inside the exe so you would to have uh, to go one step higher and then go into the uh, DLC directory so that's why I actually described this also here that's why um, I have to use this globalized path thingy and then it worked so I globalized this path so I get the actual path to the uh, to the project and then I can uh, access the folder and everything is good. So that was uh, working for me. And then all these areas here, they will be filled later. They will be filled with, uh, with the DLC paths and the content inside. These are just areas containing a lot of uh, yeah, paths and file names basically. And then here there are these little DBs and this is where I will actually load all the resources in uh, to access them later. Yeah. Okay, so first what the DLC manager does is uh, having this init function and we looked at this in a previous video. So we have a file manager, we can open it up in a second as well. And we just say, hey, file manager, give us all the files from all the folders, uh, for, from a specific folder, basically. So here, uh, project directory and the DLC main directory. So this is where we get all the pack and zip files. This is what we are doing in there. So. Uh, just to have a short look at the file manager, it's just this one function. And it's not very surprising, we get all files. So it's um, it's a function here, it's named get all files. It calls itself and this is to get also all the subfolders and the subfolders in there and the subfolders in there and then all the files in all the subfolders. So uh, it gets really everything. And uh, yeah, and we can tell it where to start. Then we can say if we want to uh, have a certain extension, for example, give me just all PNG files. And then we can also ex exclude stuff, which is important because uh, sometimes we don't want specific files uh, in, this, uh, in this list. And the first thing is important. This is the area where all this is stored. So when this function, it goes through all these, these, um, these folders and then it gets files and then when when we don't want to skip the file, this is the, the exclude stuff I just showed you. Then we actually get the path for this file with the file name and everything. And then we add it to this array we just uh, we, we put in, in the, yeah, when we call the function. So basically we tell it, hey, give me all the files of a specific folder. And then here, this is this array. Uh, this array is filled with all the stuff uh, this function finds. So in our case, when we execute this here, it would return an array with four entries and uh, it, it's all our uh, yeah, DLC files here, all of those. Okay, and then the next thing is to load this data into the project. 
And this is actually very easy when we look at this function here. It's really just one line. It's project settings and then load resource pack and then we just load it and it just works. And from that moment on, the data is available to use as it would be uh, if, if we wouldn't have excluded it uh, before in the export settings here. So, yeah. Okay. And then what I'm doing, I'm loading into different DBs. And my idea was I have one content DB where I basically, so let me look. Um, yeah. So now what we're doing, we're using again the, the get all file stuff, but this time we tell it the, the, the root of the directory and then the DLC main directory. So we get all the files in the DLC directory, everything, like all the, we, we, we iterate over all the uh, folders here, all the query and the background and all these files, everything, all these files, all these resources, all these scenes are then added uh, to this uh, to this list. And then with this list, we go in here and what uh, we do then, and this is uh, interesting, we are loading And this is, you You might have seen this, there's also a preload function which you use in on ready, but you can also load resources like this. And we are basically loading all the resources we find from this DLC folders and stored into the DB so that we can easily use it later. And this remap thing um, is something interesting because when you want to reference um, something, Usually you can, for example, like when I drag and drop my little Corgi image here, this is the path I want to reference to Corgi, right? So uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, the, 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 the path to this resource or what I, I did something up there, one second, so, okay. So this is the path you want and we see that, oh, sorry, just to underline it again, uh, we see that it's Corgi PNG. But when we look in this folder here, in the in that's why it's by the way it's useful to have a, a zip folder when we look at the data which is actually stored in here background then we will see something the the file has changed i'm not exactly sure what Godot uh, is doing there but the um, resource files they get a dot remap and then we have a dot import for the png so when you get the list of your your loaded dlc stuff you um it will return you these files with dot remap and dot import but we don't want this to reference or to load stuff like here um we need the original path basically and that's why we have this replace up there so that's basically uh all there is to it and um And this is a, a database which contains everything. It contains now the Corgi image and also the Corgi resources here and also uh, the scenes. And I noticed it is a little bit unreliable because you never know what you get basically when you get something out of the database or you would have to check the class or something. That's why I made separate databases. One is called backgrounds and one is called scenes. And in there, I will only add what's in uh, the background folder and I also only when it's uh, a dress in a resource, so I ignore the PNG basically. And then in scenes, I only add what's in scenes because now I know exactly when I access this little database and I get anything out of it, I know the type basically. I know, ah, okay, this will be a resource for a background or this will be a scene. So I'm, I'm just sure, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a method to avoid uh, mistakes. And I also made extra little functions um, to not access the database directly. I'm because uh, here's the thing: if you, for example, access this database, if you would uh, type something like this, return the database, and the key for this, it, all of these little databases are dictionaries, so you can access um, the resource by giving the path. And if you do this and the key doesn't exist, the game crashes. But if you um, if you use the get function and the path does not exist, you return null. So and this does not crash the game. So you can then, in theory, also if you want check for null and then uh, handle 
I don't know, go for a default thing or something. And yes, um, and by the way, the, the reason why we would see um, different background images when I started the game uh, and deleted more and more DLCs is this function here. Here I made a little function which goes into this uh, background database and if there is content, I always return the last image. And when I delete a DLC which contains the, in that case, in that loading order, the last image, then uh, dynamically uh, the, the previous one is used. So, uh, yeah, so you can basically make yourself little functions. You could also make something like, hey, get me a, a random background or something like that, or always the first. So you have these little helper functions to access the database and basically dynamically receive the content of your DLC stuff without knowing before what exactly is loaded. Of course, you could um, you could do checks, for example. You could hard code your paths to all the DLCs, and then you could check if the, the pack file is actually um, uh, here, the, or the zip file is actually existing, and then you could store if DLC is available or not, and then you could, I don't know, in your code could say if Kogi DLC, then blah, blah. That's of course uh, an option, but I uh, held it a little bit more dynamic, uh, and I, I load everything I find in the folder, and then uh, yeah, uh, here I can dynamically uh, load the data basically. Yeah, and this is basically what happens. So and um, and to show you some examples here in the game, we will see some examples. So uh, this we saw before we update the, the current export presets. I made a video about this. Uh, this is not so important for now. But uh, what I'm doing here is I have two options now. I can, for example, access um, the resource directly, like uh, give me the Kogi. Or I could also say, uh, so let me update this. So right now we should see the Kogi loaded here, yes. But I could of course also say, hey, the directory from the database I want to have the kitty loaded, so I can just drag and drop it in. Boop. And again, it will not directly uh, load it from here. It will, the DLC manager will go in the background. Here it will access the background database, which is a dictionary. And the, the key for this dictionary is the path to the resource and the, the actual value is then the loaded resource. So you, everything is loaded already. Uh, when the when the DLC stuff is loaded, yeah. So this would be one option, and now we should see the little kitty. Um, sorry, why is there is there no image assigned? No, what is happening? Get image. Okay, that's interesting. Why is there? Ah, of course. <laughs> what I did uh, here, the the background access is now um, dot image and this dot image is here I have a little resource made a little background um, where this is a resource where I can set a name and an image for uh, yeah, for every uh, DLC so what I should do here is not guide to the PNG but I should of course guide to this resource which contains uh, the link to the DLC and now we see the kitty and when I export this we should also see that it still works even if I delete the kitty DLC because I don't access everything directly I have this um, I have this uh, get background function and if the kitty DLC or this does not exist then we should get null and then we should just see gray in the background so uh, let me see if it works so I start the game, we have the kitty, and now I delete the kitty DLC, start the game again, and we see gray. So that's good, it doesn't crash, so that's, that's very, very nice. Um, or another option, another example would be that I showed you before, we have to get uh, background last function, it just gives you the last uh, entry in the database. When I start this now, uh, we get the sheep. Yes, the sheep is the last loaded um, uh, DLC and here I'm trying to assign the texture here is a, an example for it's a test for instancing a DLC scene so here we have a scene and uh, for this the DLC manager offers the get scene method it's uh, it's just um, 
uh, the database uh, yeah, uh, for the scenes. And then it just returns the scene and you can instance it and it's not a problem at all. Here I check before if it's null because if you instance a null scene, I think the game crashes. So uh, yeah, I only do it when the Kori DLC is actually there. And this one here is just a little test. So, so this game uh, GD just uh, contains different examples how to use this this DLC content stuff. So in that case, um, ah yeah, here I actually um, access the database directly. So for all the DLC entries, um, I get the key. Then I read out the caption and the image from uh, from yeah from from the DLC entry. And if there is something, I create a new button, get the text, and connect it to uh, this function, which just switches the texture to um, the right, uh, the right uh, image, which was stored in uh, in here. In this, uh, in here, here I define cute corgi. Oops, or I define for the kitty. I define here the name Hello Kitty and uh, the kitty image. So uh, yeah, in here, this is basically just uh, several examples how to access the DLC data, basically. So yes, so that's it, basically. So let's look at the DLC manager again. Yeah, so um, also here, we already covered everything. Um, the most important thing is to uh, realize again that uh, yeah the, the build and the the editor is a little bit different so don't trust what you see here always make an export and see if it actually really works and um, there's one last thing uh, where, which i will show in the next video and this is modding because the beautiful thing about this dynamic system is basically that you don't have to know what DLCs you will have. If you hard code all your DLC names and folders, then yeah, you, you are bound to these these lists. But in the next video, I will show that it works also with um, uh, with a, yeah, a, a DLC coming from somewhere else. So I hoped um, this was useful for you. Okay, so I hope you found it useful. Uh, leave a comment in the um, in the comment section if you have uh, thoughts about this or uh, improvements or other ideas or how you do all these things. Uh, would be interested to know about this. Bye bye.